With designing the Titan Warrior concept, a lot of the inspiration came from you know, pre-runner trucks, desert racing trucks, something that's really big in you know, where we live in Southern California. We see a lot of this type of vehicle on the streets and on the roads, and uh, it's always just gaining in popularity. So with this, it was an opportunity to do the Titan, but do it in a, this highly aggressive, more enhanced off-road form of it. So we were excited to really do that, but then this design behind me is to do it in a way that's more robotic, more technical in stealth. So with this design, you know, for an off-road vehicle, it basically starts off with having the suspension capabilities to handle the off-road. So that's where we started from, where we lengthened the, the track on each, in each wheel, about 95 millimeters, pushing that out. And we designed the front suspension, and actually working with the engineers to design the suspension, even the arms, in a way that's like muscle fiber or tendon out to these 37 inch tires, which are like these, these claws that are ready to launch this truck. So that kind of started the base of this vehicle, which gave it this good stance. And then the body then came from that, where it's been widened out you know, over six inches to give it this really muscular uh, look. It's, it's very much this wearing the suit of modern armor. That's what this Titan is doing here, where it's, it's all beefed up uh, and muscular. And it's, again, it's that, that warrior mask and that image of armor. Like when you look at the front end of this truck, you can see it's like this helmet that's it's been put on on the front end of this with a lot of the details with uh, making it more off-road capable. Like the, the skid plate is you know highly enhanced. It, it almost becomes like the front bumper, this really protective uh, shield for the truck that interlocks into, into the grill. And then you can see with the, the lighting signatures, uh, it, it really plays off the Titan T logo, is, you know, the front and the rear. And then a lot of carbon fiber composite materials around the truck, the fenders and the bumpers, make it feel really lightweight, strong, but you know, also impact absorbing. And then there's you know, other features like the hood vents for the added power of this truck, and then LED lights on the roof to really illuminate and spread far distance in the, in the evening. And then the, the, the custom quad exhaust in the back as well, like to make it really show that this performance, there's a lot of grunt and power behind this. And there's also aerodynamic elements on the truck. Uh, there's a cab mounted rear spoiler and then the rear tailgate also has an integrated spoiler that make it feel more uh, performance and aero. It's almost like Christmas actually when you create, when you sketch something and you see parts being created and then you get to see different elements of the design. It is, it's almost like opening Christmas presents when you see, it's that, you know, that kind of feeling. Aerodynamic elements on the truck. Uh, there's a cab mounted rear spoiler and then the rear tailgate also has an integrated spoiler that make it feel more uh, performance and aero. It's almost like Christmas actually when you create, when you sketch something and you see parts being created and then you get to see different elements of the design. It is, it's almost like opening Christmas presents when you see, it's that, you know, that kind of feeling.
The scenes out here help duplicate extreme wear seen on trucks and vehicles that Nissan tests. Uh, it accelerates the wear to try and duplicate uh, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years, depending on how much mileage we put on the vehicles out in this area. We check out here for squeak and rattle noises. Also durability of all the components of the vehicle from suspension to seats and also tire wear. In testing in our durability course, it's crucial to use human drivers as feedback. They can feel other things that the robot might not be able to compute or dictate to the engineer, such as, you know, when I was going over this seat, I felt a squeak or something like that. So we can get that real life feedback from the uh, driver and feed that back to design and try and make an improvement if needed. We're actually looking at the new next generation Titan. It's being prepped right now for four post durability, which is a long-term test to confirm market usage up to 20 years in the vehicle grade market. We basically run through a number of roads. Um, there's about four or five different roads that we input into the vehicle. They're all pretty severe. Uh, one of the most unique ones is the twist load that we put in the vehicle. Other road types include what we call a splash rough or a Belgian block, and also a fixed stone. All of these are the most severe roads that you would typically find in a marketplace. These roads that we're putting into the four post shaker are exactly the same as the roads in Arizona. Basically we're taking the data from Arizona and inputting them into the four post chamber and using that to simulate the vehicle. The window of time for testing actually really depends on each vehicle, but for the next generation Titan, um, it's expected to be in here for between uh, one to two months actually for testing and that would represent about 600,000 kilometers of actual market usage or about 370,000 miles in market usage. Right now we're running the hood durability test. We look for the aging characteristics of the hood under repetitive open-close operations. We're doing the door open-close durability and there as well, similar as the hood, we look for the aging characteristics under repetitive open close. We run thousands of cycles to represent more than 15 years in service. When we're considering a pickup truck, when we do our testing, we're gonna look at things like uh, approach angles when we, uh, for off-road usage, um, and then just for overall industrial use, because there's gonna be more things that can contact the vehicle. So, compared to a passenger vehicle that typically stays on road, the severity is going to be a little bit higher. One of the tests that we do is what we call a flooded road test, and that's simply just to see how the vehicle performs driving through a flooded road situation, whether this be on road or off road. Um, we want to make sure that the integrity of the vehicle is maintained and that there's not going to be any significant concerns after driving through something like this. So when we do what we call the road interference tests, we're looking at the uh, what parts of the vehicle can contact given something like a curb stone or something like a drainage ditch or a sidewalk separator. Any kind of road interference that the customer may encounter. Sometimes it may seem like just the little things that we do aren't really important, but down the line in 10 years when this truck's 10 years old and there's still no rattles inside the car, I can feel good about that. I'm proud about every vehicle I'm involved with, uh, in particular the truck, just because of my truck history with helping out soldiers and giving them a safe vehicle. I want that same feeling with everyone that gets to drive this truck.